3, beginning at verse 1. It said, Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and they set out from Achaia Grove and came to Jordan. He and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they crossed over. So it was after three days that the officers went through the camp, and they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it, that you may know the way by which you must go. For you have not passed this way before. And Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Then Joshua spoke to the priest, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and cross over before the people. So they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. My thought today is coming from verse number four in the latter part of that verse. And it says, For you have not passed this way before. Tell somebody you're going somewhere you've never been before. Amen. God got a place for you to go that you have never been before before. Now at the beginning of the year, God dropped one word into my spirit and that word was greater. Now I did not understand exactly what God meant by greater, but God began to show me that he's going to do some great things in the lives of those that believe and trust his word. He's going to do some great things. Now I don't know what your greater might be, but I know that God got a greater for you. Greater than you've ever seen, greater than thing that you've ever done. God's got it for you. And he gave it by prophecy. See, I, I don't claim to be a prophet. I'm a pastor teacher. But God gave me this word, and this word is for everybody that would receive it. And particularly for the people here at Evergreen Church. Because this is, the, this, this is my assignment right here at Evergreen Church. So in January... When God gave it to me, I began to look for greater. And I've seen God do some great and magnificent things in my life since January up to now. And not just me, but there are other people in the ministry that I've observed God doing great things. That. But you know why? Because we received it when we first heard it. See, you have to learn to receive the word. See, when God give it, it's up to you to what you do with it. So once God give it, and you got to have anticipation and start looking for what God has said and begin to trust God to do what he said he'd do. So I've been seeing God do some great and mighty things. Now, if you have not seen God do great and mighty things in your life, don't worry, you still got four months left. You still got time. So put your antennas up and begin to expect greater. Now, the children of Israel left Egypt with the promise of God. And God told them he was going to take them to a land that flowed with milk and honey. He was going to take them to a good land. They were slaves. And God says, I'm going to take you a place where you can be free. And, and, and the children of Israel were an illustration of what God wanted to do through the whole world. He just used them as a nation, as a pattern. But see, God wants you free. He wants you free from addictions. Yeah. Amen. He wants you free from poverty. Yeah. He wants you free from sickness. Yeah. He wants you free from mental things that are binding you out. All those thoughts and things that's bringing you into captivity. All these demonic spirits that will tell you God wants you free. Yeah. Amen. So he told him he's going to take them to a land that they're going to be free. But a lack of faith and disobedience caused many of them to die in the wilderness. They left Egypt going to the promised land, but because they refused to believe God and they refused to obey God, they died in the wilderness. So they started, but they didn't finish. They didn't reach their destination because they didn't have the faith to trust God in the hard times. How many of y'all know you're going to have some hard times? Just because you were saved does not mean that you're going to sail right through without any storms in your life. 
without any hardships in your life. They're going to come, but you got to remember to trust God. I remember um, when Jesus was getting in the boat to, with the disciples, and they were, and, and, and he said, let's go to the other side. Well, while they were out on the ocean, a storm arose. And when the storm arose, the boat began to get filled with water. And the people, the disciples began to panic. And they said, Master, don't you care that we're going to perish? Jesus stood up on the boat and said, peace be still. And all the wind and all the waves stopped. Now see, had they known, had they realized that Jesus was on the boat, and Jesus said, we're going to the other side. He didn't say you wouldn't have some storms between now and the other side. You got to have the faith to believe God for the hard times. Amen. So he, he never told them there was not going to be any giants between Egypt and the promised land. He never told them that there would never be any droughts or any famine between Egypt and the promised land. He never told them that there wouldn't be any enemies that would rise up against them because they're trying to pass through their territory. He didn't tell them that that would not happen. But he did tell them, if you trust him. If you just trust him. He said, if you trust me, I'll fight your enemies for you. He said, if you trust me, I'll bring you some water out of a rock in a desert place. Where there's a desert, I'll make you a water fountain because that's the kind of God that he is. And he said, I feed you with bread from heaven. See, God got resources that we don't know nothing about. We just got to focus on God. Don't focus on how God is going to do it. Don't focus on when God is going to do it. Just believe God that he'll do what he said he'll do because God is faithful. Hallelujah. God is faithful. Amen. Now, the, we have to believe that whatever God promised, he's also able to to perform. Amen. And God put this greater in my spirit and, and, and a lot of people picked it up and when we first got started, we heard a lot of messages even from other people in the ministry talking about greater because they had this anticipation in their heart, but we don't want it to die out because the year not over yet. Amen. Amen. I'm still looking for some more greater. Amen. 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 Now see, the older generation that left Egypt died off in the wilderness. They died because of unbelief. See, God didn't bring them out of Egypt in order for them to die in the wilderness. That's right. He brought them out of Egypt in order for them to go right into the promised land. Yeah. But, they had, but when they saw the giants, when they saw the obstacles, they focused on the giants and they focused on the obstacles more than they focused on God. Yeah. That happens right now. A lot of times when things happen in our life, we know what the word of God says. But sometimes our situation and our circumstances will cause us to lose focus on what God said and start focus on what we're looking at. That's the Bible, the Bible says, for we walk by what? Faith and not by sight. In other words, if, you, if you're making your decision based on what you see, then you're discounting God. You got to grab hold of what God said. And if God made you a promise, God will fulfill his promise. You got to believe that. So the children of Israel spent 40 years in the wilderness, traveling in a circle. It, it would have taken them, somebody said, 11 days to go from Egypt into the promised land if they just took the short route, if they took a straight route. But it took them 40 years. And the reason it took 40 years, because the unbelievers had to die out. How many of you know you got some unbelievers that's got to get out of your life? How many of you got some unbelieving people that you need to get out of your life? God will tell you one thing and they'll tell you something else. And you begin to focus on what they say more than what God said. That's why you need to be careful who you get in your ear. You need to be careful who you're listening to. Amen. Amen. And, and see, the thing is, the people can love you and they want what's best for you, but they don't know what's best for you. Only God knows what's best for you. And you got to get to where you trust them. I think about the scripture when Jesus told the apostles, he said, I'm going to Jerusalem. And when I get there, they're going to scourge me. They're going to, to crucify me. 
They're going to kill me. Peter said, not so, Lord. No, Lord, that ain't going to happen to you. Because see, Peter had been traveling with Jesus for all these years, and now Jesus is talking about we're going to Jerusalem, and they're going to kill me. And Peter said, no. You know why? You know why Peter said that? Because Peter loved Jesus. But you know what Jesus told Peter? He said, get behind me, Satan. Sometimes you got to say, get behind me, Satan. That person might mean well, but if they didn't say what God said, you got to realize that they are not Satan, but they're allowing Satan to use them. So you got to talk not to them, but talk to the spirit that's operating in them. Because, see, our fight is not against people. You love people, and people love you. But everybody is operating by a spirit of some kind. And some people have unclean spirits, and all they can give you is unclean information. Amen. Amen. And so you got to be careful who you're getting your information from. You need to make sure that you're always in touch with God, because God is always right. Even your mama can be wrong, but God is right. So they had to spend 40 years in the wilderness traveling in circle until all the unbelievers died out. But now, in this text, they're getting ready to go into the promised land. And God was about to carry them into a different direction. See, they had been traveling around in that wilderness for so long, they probably was familiar with everything in the wilderness. But God told them, say, keep your eyes on the priests. Keep your eyes on the Levites. Keep your eyes on the Ark of God, which represented God among the people. In other words, God says, don't presume that you already know where you're going. And don't presume that you already know how to get there. Because you're going somewhere where you have never been before. See, I like Star Trek. We got any Trekkie fans in here? Amen, amen. Going places where new lives and new civilization. Going where no man has gone before. I'm going some places I've never been before. Amen, amen. So God is about to do a new thing in our lives. And God gave it to us for us. As many as grab it, as many as will receive it, God is going to do some great things into your life right now. Some things that are beyond your, your imagination. Forget about what's familiar. And don't think about how you used to do it. Be prepared for something new that you have never seen before. Tell somebody, be prepared to do something. Tell them, say, tell, be prepared to do something new in your life. Amen. Now this year, our whole theme for the year pretty much has been greater. So we had a revival. How many of y'all remember the revival? We had a revival. And our theme for the revival was greater. And we had four dynamic preachers that brought us the word of God. And when I was getting ready to prepare this message, I began to look over my notes that I took during the revival. And I was so blessed. And so I said, well, I'm going to bless the people too. If these notes bless me, I'm going to bless them. And so I want to just give y'all some of what the people taught us during the revival because the theme was greater. Evangelist Renee Sellers started our revival off. And she told us that Moses did not make it into the promised land because of unbelief. Now, when she said that, I began to, you know, I'm the kind of person, my ears perked up because I don't ever just take what somebody say without being substantiated by the Bible. But she went to the word of God and she showed where God told Moses, you didn't believe me. So it was unbelief that caused him. And I began to look into it. Because you see, Moses got stuck in a rut. Let me tell you what happened. You need to be ready for a change. This is what she said. She said, you have to be ready for change because there must be a transition. Don't get stuck in a rut of doing things like you've always done it. See, God is getting ready to do something new in your life, and it will be nothing like you have ever seen before. 
And she told us that Moses missed out on the promised land because of unbelief. And she gave us a scripture. Now, all these times that I've been reading that scripture, I thought Moses didn't make it to the promised land because Moses was a hothead. Because Moses got angry. Moses allowed the people to cause him to be angry. And because of his anger, he disobeyed God. But after Evangelist Sellers <laughs> brought this, I got a new perspective. Amen. She let us know it was unbelief. Now, let me explain it to you. You see, God told Moses to take the rod and go and speak to the rock. And he was going to make water come out of the rock. Well, you see, Moses was used to the rod. He used the rod to open up the Red Sea. He used the rod to turn into a snake. And the snake that it turned into ate up the snakes that Pharaoh's magicians made. So Moses was used to the rod. And then when God told him before to smite the rock and water would come out, he used the rod. Moses got so used to using the rod that when God told him to speak, he used the rod. In other words, he went back to doing what he always did. He got familiar. See, God was going to do a new thing. God was trying to show Moses the power of the spoken word. It's time out for hitting. It's time to speak. And then expect the power of God to operate. But Moses didn't have the faith to speak to the rock. He knew if he hit it, something was going to happen. Unbelief. He didn't trust God. Amen. And so that, that really blessed me. Because see, God wants to speak to you. And you don't have to have any evidence of what happened in the past for God to do something new in your life now. If God speaks to you, that's how God works. He works through his spirit. That's why he gave us the Holy Ghost. So when God speaks to you, don't take anything else under consideration. Just obey God. Amen. Pastor Andy Peacock came, and he told us that we need to increase our capacity. Y'all remember that? He said, he, the, the God had told the children of Israel to dig a ditch. You see, and, and there was no, no rain, there was no thunder, there was no nothing, but God filled the ditch. And he filled the ditch based upon how deep they dug the ditch. And he said, we need to increase our capacity. The capacity is the maximum amount that anything can contain. He let us know that our capacity was too small to contain what God was going to do in your life. Hallelujah. Your capacity to believe God will control the size of your vision. The size of your vision will determine the size of your blessing. If you can only see God doing small things, then you're going to able, God can only do small things because God is working according to your faith. Sometimes we take our education under consideration. God want to promote you, but you say, I don't have no degree. Uh huh. Sometimes God want to do things for you, and you say, well, I don't come from the right family. God want to do something, you say, I don't look the part. I got some flaws. As long as you look at your ability and not look at God's ability, your capacity is going to be too small. You got to enlarge your capacity. The color of your skin, just because you, you might be the, a, a different color from somebody else doesn't mean that God won't put you in there. Sometimes you can be the only little dark spot in there. God don't care. Amen. Amen. Or you might be the only little white spot in there. God don't care. Amen. You just got to trust God and believe what he said. Your capacity is too small. And if your capacity is too small, you need to enlarge your capacity by not looking at you, but by looking at God's ability. With God, nothing is impossible. Amen. God will bring water out of a rock. He turned water into wine. And there is nothing too hard for God to do. Increase your capacity. The way you increase your capacity is to increase your faith in God. About two weeks ago, first lady was preaching, and I put a pin in this. And sometimes you hear some stuff, but it's always good to hear somebody else say it too. She said, you need to continue to grow your faith. Don't ever get to a point where you feel like you've got enough faith. 
you continue to grow your faith. You need to continue to go to Bible study. I, it, it, it hurts me to my heart to see how people undervalue coming to Bible study. You need to be where you can learn the word of God. When we in Bible study, when we dismiss the, the, the Facebook crowd and we dismiss the YouTube crowd, we have a conversation among ourselves and find out what you learned and what you didn't learn and what you, if you have some questions, we can clear it up. You need to be in that kind, that's a learning environment. Your faith is not gonna grow unless you do something to grow it. And the more your faith grow, the more you'll see the power of God manifesting in your life. The more your faith grow, you'll be sent to see the blessings of God show up in your life. Amen. So he said increase your capacity by increasing your faith in God. Receive the vision that God gives you and run with the vision and don't look back. Pastor Rodney Thrift came one night and he told us to be strong and courageous. He said, God will give you dreams and God will give you visions. But following your dream and following your vision involve risk. Sometimes you got to give up something. Sometimes you got to put down what you have in order to get what God has for you. You can't hold on to everything that you already got and expect to get what God got for you. You got to make some room for it. Amen. And he says, it may be risky, but take a step. Put your faith in God and wait on God to do what he said he'll do. Now, I really put a pin in this. He said, if your dream does not scare you, it's too small. I mean, I got that. He said, if your dream don't scare you, I remember when God gave me the vision for, for, for what we see in here right now, we had about 11 adults and about 11 children active in church. And God telling me to build a building that would accommodate 500 or more people out here in Bristol, Georgia. Do you know the population of Bristol? <laughs> That'll scare you. But see, the thing is, when you know it came from God, you have to hold on to it. And you have to believe it. And we had some giants along the way. We stopped for four years. Didn't have nothing but a concrete slab for four years sitting out here. But you know what? The people had a mind to work. The people believed God. The people held on to the vision during a hard time. That's why we see the manifestation right now. And then God told me, say, now that we got the building built, now we got to build a ministry. And the ministry is going to be built with mature Christians. All this damn baby Christian, all this damn whining and woe is me and gloom and shut up. <laughs> Learn how to trust God when you're going through the hard time. Stop looking at your problems and start looking at your God. But you got to build up your faith. And it takes step by step by step by step. You're not going to get there by leaps and bounds like you Superman. No, you're going to have to take some steps. And every step gets you closer to where you want to be. Amen. I saw somebody had a, 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 a post on Facebook. And on the Facebook they say, I'm going to change. That's a good idea. But you know what? You got to do something to make change take place. And you take steps in the right direction. And if you keep walking in the right direction, after a while you'll reach your destination. And don't get discouraged while you're on the way because you're going to have some obstacles on the way. And you know what your biggest enemy is going to be? Yourself. <laughs> Amen. Yourself, that's going to be your flesh, wanting to do things that you know is contrary to what you need to be doing. If you can get yourself under control, you can handle the devil. Just get yourself under control. Stop eating all that cake. <laughs> Amen. Keep talking about I want to get I want to get healthier and I want to stop eating that control the way you eat. Do some exercise, walk, do something. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna do it all at one time. Take a step and keep stepping in the right direction. Amen. Amen. That was Pastor Rodney Thrift. He let us know that God is a big God and He do big things. And, and, and if God give you a vision, then you do what God tell you to do. 
Amen. And then the last person we had, Bishop Michelangelo James, mighty man of God. Bishop James told us that God already got your greater set aside waiting on you. God already got your greater prepared. All he's doing is waiting for you to get prepared to receive it. He said that the word of God is our compass that will lead us into a transition. And that transition leads to transformation. And transformation leads to a different perception. Don't that sound like Bishop? <laughs> and, and your perception will determine your greater. It's your perception that will prepare you for greater. Your perception is how you see things. You got to learn to see things differently. Until you can see things differently, you won't have anything different. And once we receive a different perception, we will be prepared for our greater. So I just wanted to bless you with that because God got things in store for you that's just on, sitting on the shelf right now waiting on you. Amen. God wants you blessed. God wants you to have victory in your home. He don't want it to be where whenever you come home, you walk in one door and everybody just want to walk out the other door. God wants you to have peace in your home. God wants you to have joy in your home. God wants you to have abundant supply in your home. God wants you to have peace in your mind. Amen. Amen. God got great things in store for you. Greater than you have ever seen before. Just prepare. Just believe God. Just get ready to receive. Father God, I thank you right now for your word. And I thank you for the people of God that have heard your word. And I pray, Father God, that somebody was blessed. Somebody have their anticipation and talents up right now. Expecting you to make a move in their life. Carrying them in the direction that you would have them to go. And that is a, for good and not for evil. For a blessing. Hallelujah. And not a curse. So I come against the enemy right now in the name of your son Jesus. I'm standing in the gap for those that will receive your word right now. And Father God, at the end of this year, we'll have a testimony of what you have done and what you are doing in and through your people because you want us to bless. Jesus said he came that we might have life and have it in abundance. And so Father God, we look for the abundance. We look for the greater to show up in our lives. And we give you all praise, honor, and glory. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If there be somebody that don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the promises of God are for the people of God. You make your commitment to God. And when you make your commitment to God, God already got his commitment made to you. The first step to receiving greater is to receive a new life. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things passed away. All things become new. Now, when you receive Jesus Christ, you got to expect old things to pass away in your life. You got to expect a new life. And when you expect it, then you get, grab hold to the Word of God. Find you a, a faith-filled church, a church that teaches the Word of God. And then you can learn to grow. And I'm going to tell you what, there is more benefit in being grown than being a baby. Amen. 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 So we, we, the first step is to receive Christ into your life as Lord and Savior. So if you are not saved... We're going to give you that opportunity right now. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, he said that God will save you. Come on up, brother. If there be anybody, this is your opportunity to turn around your life. Because God won't, and the Bible says, if you come, he won't turn you away. He won't turn you away. Jesus Christ died for every sin that you have ever committed. So don't let anything that you have done in your past hinder you from making Jesus Christ Lord and Savior in your life. We're going to give you some more time. Thank the Lord for this brother that's up here now. But I believe there's some more people. There are some more people. We worship you. This is your opportunity. You, here, you need to know and know that you know that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior in your life.
you're giving your time. Because I know there's somebody God pressing you right now and letting you know now's the time. While the Spirit of God is trying to draw you, right now is the time. You're the light. What's your name? In the dark. Oh, my God. 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 That is who you are. We call. We make a miracle worker. Promise keeper. Light in the dark. My God. That is who you Yeah. 